Hi, now we're going through the objections to a small customer, small, small order solution program. And the first big objection is, wait a minute, all my costs are fixed. Every dollar margin counts. If I drive away anybody and I don't change any, any of my people around here, they've just got more slack and, and therefore I'll lose, uh, you know, th that margin dollar will, will come out of my bottom line. Well, actually, when we look at fixed costs versus variable costs, um, in the Waypoint Analytics universe of clients, uh, Waypoint right now, at the time of this recording, has about $16 billion in, in total client sales, uh, coming from over 500 different branches and over 50 different channels of distribution, you know, ranging from steel to art supplies. Um, most of the of the these these clients, when you look at their their cost to serve models, about 20% of all the operating costs is put in a sort of other. It's not specifically allocated to inside sales or outside sales or trucks or whatever. It's just you know g general administrative overhead. Uh, whereas the rest of the costs, 80%, are very quickly variable. Uh, remember earlier when I said I was doing an analysis and a turnaround that in the minnow pool of customers. When you took out the 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 twenty percent, eighty percent was quickly variable or totally variable, and that meant that right away there was two dollars of of extra variable cost that could be freed up for every dollar of margin that we would lose. Now, if we lose this dollar, it, it goes away. What are these people going to do? And now I'm going to ask a question, which is: Let's not assume that the world is static. Uh, and that this energy can flow somewhere else. So if I go to all my employees and say, look, uh, if you had, you know, 15 more minutes of time or another hour a day, what would you proactively do with it to, to, to get the best return on your investment, best return for the company and so forth? Oh, well, I would. I've got all these things the boss wants me to do, but I don't have time because I'm so busy taking care of mistakes that were made or returns from minnows that placed orders yesterday. Remember this. If you offer customers more service for lower prices than they can get somewhere else, more of them are going to show up. They're going to find their way to your door and they're going to bury you. Uh, so in your backyard with your plants, you... you uh, you'll notice that if you prune them, so you go out there and prune the plants, what happens is the common root energy just keeps doing what it does and it still flows into the plant, but there are less places it can flow to, so it flows to what's left and the rest of it sort of grows, blossoms more dynamically, right? Well, is the question is, would that work in a business? So if we prune some of the customers, would our energy flow to help the, re the, the, the remaining customers, who are presumably better, uh, grow more fully. Or another variation is if we weed around a plant, then the, the, the root energy doesn't compete with the roots of the weeds and they can, the, the, they can do get more energy to feed that particular plant. So what we do is we go look at, for example, in the Waypoint universe, we can look at a, uh, a, a report where it's called the year-over-year Delta PBIT, that's for profit before interest and taxes, net profit, if you will. Um, ranking report by customer. And so we look at the net profit we had on a customer two years ago and last year, and we subtract the two, and if it's positive or negative, they all get ranked. And at the top of the report, their customers are up mightily. You think, well, wait a minute. If these guys grew 20, 30, 40, 50%. Where do we get the, the, the people energy to take care of them? But if we go to the bottom of the report, we'll say, oh, and there are a lot of customers that disappeared. I mean, they, their business fell out of bed. Uh, they're doing a lot less. So every day, it turns out, whether we're consciously driving customers away or not, customers are leaving. Maybe they're also dying. But at the same time, other ones are growing. So they're, they're, they're already dynamically is, a, is an interplay of, of people recycling their energy to whoever's calling on the phone, if you will. Now, if we go around and give everybody heavy-duty, proactive objectives, management by organization, and we start to hear, boss, I don't have any time, by, you know, shaping up or shipping out, in a sense, the small customers. I mean, they, they, we're not firing them, but if they don't like our new prices and terms by which we can make a, a profit of them, they go paralyze our competitor. That frees up slack to go into these kinds of objectives, and maybe a lot of them are very specific, customer-centric, uh, big target account-oriented where before we didn't have the time and energy to do that. 
Um, so we don't want to just necessarily let the service energy flow to all the customers that are left. We might say, look, let's take the very top, most profitable and, and biggest potential accounts. Let's do team visits to them. Let's have Honcho's audit the paper and the product as it flows to the place and look at a lot of ways to tune our buy-sell relationship. Um, let's empower all the employees to say, if it's a key account, the answer is yes, whatever. And what do you, would, would we would be surprised if some of these accounts next year had grown by 20 to 500% in sales? But we can't, we can't do that proactive team focus on a few key accounts with huge upside potential if we don't have the time. So it turns out that, that this, is, this is wrong in the sense that, yes, everybody's here today, but the truth of the matter is, as fast as we can free up some slack, it can flow to too many other things, sit in our desk, and if they happen to be better opportunities, why shouldn't we let that energy flow there? Thank you.